everybody. Um, today what we're going to be going through is the self-ionization of water. Um, and basically what this will enable you to understand is what happens to the pH of your water when you say um, leave it in the car when it's 40 degrees or what happens to the pH of the water when you're taking it out of the fridge. Okay, so um, you'll be able to impress your friends with your theory of chemistry. Um, okay, anyway, so um, the self-ionization of water is actually the concept that water can react with itself. Um, remember that water is antiprotic, which means basically that it can act as both an acid and a base. So let's have a look at this concept. So if you have a water molecule here, um, and another one comes along, alright, you can basically make a system where one of these waters is going to be playing a role play of an acid, the other water is going to have a role of being a base, and so therefore the acid will donate its hydrogen to the base, which will accept. Okay? So what you'll find is that you create OH- in the aqueous state, and you create H3O+, also in the aqueous state. Okay, so now that we've got this equation, um, that's actually known as the self-ionization of water. So you don't have to remember it, you just have to know that one acts as an acid, the other one acts as a base, and you can quickly figure out your equation. Okay, so we add these two together because they're the same thing. So in other words, we've got two waters in the liquid state giving you hydroxide, um, plus hydronium. Okay, so now that we've got this equilibrium equation, um, what we can do is we can write up an equilibrium constant, as you would have um, remembered in all the other equilibrium cases that we had. Now, when we write out the equilibrium constant, remember that the um, states within the equilibrium constants are really important. You can't have solid to be in equilibrium, nor can you have liquid at equilibrium, because those things do not have a concentration, okay, and they're not very dynamic, especially solid. So what you'll find is that the only thing you can do here is get the product of the um, products, really. So OH- times by H3O+, plus, and then you don't have divided by any type of reactants, because all your reactants are in liquid phase. So that's it for the equilibrium constant. And because this is a different case, because this is the self ionization of water, W for water, and so we have W here. It's known as the KW value. Okay? Now, the KW value um, is very important in your calculation of pH. If you remember, so just make sure you know this and you can recognize. And now, one, one more thing before we go into that. Um, this, the units here are going to be molar squared because concentration times concentration gives you molar squared. Okay, so I hope you remember um, one important equation, one of the many important equations in pH calculations, and that is um, when you times OH minus by H3O plus. Um, you get the value of 10 to the minus 14. And then, um, what you also get is a condition here, that it has to be at 25 degrees only. Okay, so let us have a brief look at this. Now, what you didn't realize back in, I don't know, year 9 or year 10, um, is that this is actually equal to the KW constant. Okay, so that can change depending on the temperature. Now, I'll show you why, okay? So if we have two waters in the liquid phase, giving us, um, whoops, oh, okay, I'll change that into an O, OH minus plus H3O plus. If we have this system, um, what you, this self-ionization of water is actually an endothermic process. And if you remember what endothermic means, it means that it needs energy, it requires energy. So we basically have plus energy here. Okay? 
And now what ends up happening is that whatever temperature you have, if your temperature is different than 25 degrees, you will not have this value anymore. You have a completely different Kw value and that will change the pH of the system. Okay, so say, um, say you have two conditions. Let's just have a look at the two. Um, say you have hot, so you have hot conditions, so you boil some water to make some tea or some coffee and you're actually drinking, um, let's have a look. Um, when you increase the energy of the system, okay, when this increases, it goes more forward, okay? So, in other words, if it goes more forward, then Kw increases, okay? And since Kw increases, what that means is that instead of being 10 to the minus 14, it can be something like 10 to the minus 12, okay? Because that's actually an increase, okay? Uh, minus 12 from minus 14 is an increase. So let's just say that the Kw value changes hypothetically to 10 to the minus 12. Molar squared. Remember. Okay, so now that we have that one, let's have a look at what happens when it's cold. So this, you're putting your water bottle in the fridge. Um, basically the energy this time goes the opposite way. So it goes down. Alright? And since energy goes down, the reaction has to compensate to make more energy and therefore it has to go backwards, right? There's a backward reaction and this decreases the products because those products are working hard to go backwards and make more energy. Okay, so cold, basically in this case the Kw value decreases. So it goes even lower than minus 14, it goes to minus 16, okay, for instance. Now you see the, um, how this is relevant in a moment when we go through how the pH is affected by this. Okay, now let's have a look at the pH. Okay, so I'll get rid of this reaction and let's have a look at what happens basically. Alright, so say we have the hot case, okay? So um, in the hot case, basically what we have is H3O plus times in by OH minus, which is the self ionization the um, Kw value, the Kw constant, it's equal to, this time, 10 to the minus 12. Okay? So, the neutrality point is basically when these two are equal to each other, right? So, let's just say, let's just say that we've got um, this one equal to that one, so we'll call them x, because they're the same thing, x squared, because they're times in by each other, gives you 10 to the minus 12, and then when you square root this number, you get x, which is equal to H3O plus, which is equal to 10 to the minus 6. Okay? Now, if you take the logarithm, negative log 10 of that, to get the pH of the system, when you go negative log 10 of 10 to the minus 6, you get a pH of 6. So basically what this proves to you is that when you have a hot case, hotter than 25 degrees of water, you get an um, acidic pH. So when you're drinking your tea, you're drinking acid. Okay? Now, let's have a look at the other case. Let's have a look at this being 10 to the minus 16, so the cold case. Alright? So again, at the point of neutrality, um, these two are equal to each other, okay? So you have x squared equals to 10 to the minus 16, and then you have x equals to the square root of this, which happens to be 10 to the minus 8, and then when you take the pH, negative log 10 of 10 to the minus 8 gives you a pH of exactly 8. Alright, and so when it's a cold environment, when the water is in a cold environment, it will turn to um, more basic compared to its normal 25 degree. Okay, so let's just have a look last, lastly at um, 25 degrees and I'll show you how we actually get water to be neutral, pH of 7. So if this is normally negative 14 at 25 degrees, again if you make these two equal to each other it will be x squared equals to 10 to the minus 14. You square root that and you get x equals to 10 to the minus 7. And that becomes a pH of um, negative, negative log 10 of 10 to the minus 7, 
which is actually 7. So that's proof to you.